the Smith not only made weapons, but the Smith made nails, the Smith made armor. Um, it would depend upon the, the kingdom that you were in at the time. Um, you would have a blacksmith who would be, you know, someone that would take care of ho shoeing horses, uh, making nails, things of that nature. You'd have a weaponsmith who would make swords or pole arms, um, and you would have an armorer. Sometimes it was the same individual. Sometimes it would be a group of individuals. It would depend upon the circumstances at that time for that particular kingdom, if it was England or Germany or France or, or you know, other European countries. Well, this is a flail. And what a flail was designed to do is when you were fighting in combat, it was actually originally an agricultural instrument. And what would happen is the flail was designed to get past a shield because the armor of the knights had gotten so good uh, by the late Renaissance and the, and the early and the late Middle Ages, it was very hard to inflict damage. What the flail did was as an agricultural instrument is when you struck an individual shield, if this was a, if this is my sh you know, shield arm over here and you swing it, and it were to hit the shield, that would stop or block or deflect a sword blow. Now you have the chain. The chain whips over the top of the shield and strikes either the shoulder or the head of your opponent. If they're not wearing armor, if it's just like you or me dressed, you know, dressed as I am now, that effectively ends the fight because you've either broken their collarbone or you've hit them in the head, that's it. If they're wearing armor, the deviltry of the flail device comes in with the fact that there are spiked balls. So what happens with the spike is now all of the energy, and I'm not a physicist, is transferred into the spike. What this does is it makes a large dent either into the shoulder pauldron of the armor or into the helmet of the individual that's wearing the armor. What this in turn does is a couple of blows of that nature, all of a sudden now he can't raise his shield arm up into proper position it now gives the combat advantage to the person wielding the flail. The Morning Star is a variation of the flail. And what it is literally, and it depends again upon what country you're dealing with, because what I've learned in my years of experience is that the name or nomenclature of the weapons often changed from country to country um, depending upon you know, the weaponry of the time. Um, so for instance, in England, it might be known as an English bill, but in Germany, the very same weapon might be known as a bill hook, simply because of what was on it. So a morning star is where they took the flail ball and they directly attached it to the end of a wooden shaft. Now the advantage of that particular weapon is it was good against cracking or crunching armor, and you didn't have the chain, which is the weak spot of a flail that might break. Well, actually this is a war hammer. It's also, it could also be known as a war pick, depending upon which country, you know, again, you're in. Now, the war hammer was designed as a concussive weapon. It was designed to strike the helmet of your opponent, um, thereby hopefully rendering them unconscious. Um, or, if you were deliberately, you know, say you're trying to, you know, capture a king. You may not want to kill the king. The king can be ransomed. The king is worth money. Hit him in the head with this, stun him. Maybe your guys can take him alive. You can ransom him. There's a lot of that with the chivalry going on. Conversely, you want to get rid of him for whatever reason. You turn it around and you use the pointed end and that will punch through most plate armor. Okay, this is a mace. A mace is a variation of the Morning Star. Um, and what happens with a mace is again, you have these nice sharp points, although the metal is actually flattened on the end. And what this does is this is again, it's a concussive weapon that is used to strike the armor, um, thereby punching holes in the opponent's defense. If the gentleman is not wearing plate armor that you're fighting, pretty much one blow from this ends the fight. You either breaking the arm that you're hitting, breaking the collarbone, or again, if you hit him in the head, that's the, the fight's over in that case. Thank you.